Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Are we on here? There we go. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here with you today because I fill a unique role in this conference. First off, you might notice I'm a female, and there aren't too many of us on the stage. There's just four of us, and this panel is the pretty panel because we have Tiffany and me, the only one with two females on the panel. But beyond that, I'm neither a scientist nor an engineer. You might wonder, what on earth are you doing here then? Why did they give you a spot on the stage? Because some of you, including George Taylor sitting here in the audience whose study was referenced in Cork's presentation, have, may have far more knowledge than I have on very specific areas. But the unique role that I fill in this entire conversation is the role of public education. I come from a background as a motivational speaker, as you may or may not gather already, but I don't come from a science background, I don't come from a government background, I don't come from a public policy background. I'm just an average person who can communicate effectively. But because of that, I understand what the average person doesn't understand. And one of the ways that I do public education to help the public understand the role that energy plays in their life and why they should care about it is that I write a weekly column on energy issues. And I've distributed this week's column throughout this room. And because I was going to be speaking today on green energy, guess what I wrote this week's column on? Green energy. Is that clever or what? But I would encourage you to take some. I've got more in the back if there aren't enough. I just kind of spread them around the room. And realize as you look at this, I run companion nonprofit organizations that advocate on behalf of energy and the energy industry. So as I've given you this column that's on the table, I've given you some bumper stickers that are on the table, and I've also given you my oversized business card because I believe in living large, don't take any of this stuff unless you actually want it, okay? Don't feel like, oh, well, we don't want to offend her and leave it here and make her think we didn't want her stuff. I have to beg for money to pay for this stuff, so don't take it unless you actually want it. But I would encourage those of you who are here today, especially those of you who, like me, are average people. I would encourage you to check out my weekly column every single week on redstate.com. I publish it Monday morning. You can just Google my name, Marita Noon, and Red State, and you can find the column. And what I work to do is provide for you current news-based talking points so that you can communicate with all your friends who did not come here. How many of you have friends who didn't come here today? Okay, you all do, good. Okay, you've probably learned things that you wanna go home and say to your friends, did you know that? Do you know about? Well, that's my goal with my weekly column that I write is I want to give you talking points, things that as you read them, as you learn them, you want to take that and share it with other people. Now, let's see what you all know. This is a panel about the cost of green energy. So I'm going to do a couple questions and I want to ask you, and those of you who are my friends, who read my column, you may not answer, okay? I'm going to give a free copy of my book, Energy Freedom, to anyone who can answer all of the, these three questions, I think it's three, that I'm going to ask you. Okay, the first question is, how much money from the 2009 stimulus bill went towards or was available for green energy projects? How many, who knows? So, what someone over here said? 90 billion, okay, you're very close. It's, the numbers vary depending on who you look at. The number I usually quote is almost 100 billion. But 90 billion, I'll, we'll give you credit for that one, okay? In fact, why don't we just give you this book, okay? Jennifer, uh, Tiffany, would you hand him that? We'll give you that book. I've got some more in the back, and in the box in the back, we'll go ahead with the next person, who knows? Okay, the next one is, how, we, you all know about Solyndra, correct? Okay, how many other green energy projects that were funded through the stimulus bill have gone bankrupt or are circling the drain? 20, 64, about 10, 
35, 110, who said 60? You did? You said 16? Well, that's way wrong, so you don't get a book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, Linda's going to say, you already have a book, Linda. Okay. 64. Okay, well, the number, it's, it's a difficult number to say for sure because we can tell which ones have gone out of business, which ones are, as I like to call, circling the drain. But again, the number I quote typically is more than 50 stimulus-funded green energy projects have already failed or are circling the drain. All right, so who got that? The man in the red shirt, he gets a book. Chris Skates, do you have one of your books we could give away? My friend Chris Skates here, he's written a book called Going Green. It's a novel. He works in a power plant. It's a great novel. And if he ran and got one, we could give your book away as the third freebie because I gave you some advertising. You can give my audience a book. Okay? All right, the third question that's going to get Chris Skates' book going green is of those stimulus-funded projects, how many of them have connections to President Obama, Vice President Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, Al Gore, Bill Richardson, or other high-ranking Democrats? What percentage of them? No. Nope. What'd you say, Tiffany? 98? No, that's not what's... You know, and again, these numbers are, are, are negotiable. They're hard to define. I have done more research on what I like to call Obama's green energy crony corruption scandal than any other single entity out there. And if you just Google Obama's green energy crony corruption scandal, you will find the portion of my website that lists every article that I have written on that. So now we have the book to give away. Who's going to come up with the number that has the green energy crony corruption connection? 88%, someone over here said, did someone say 88? Well, give it to whoever said 88% because my number, my researcher and I, Linda, well, good, you already have my book, so you can have Chris's book. Oh, good, all right, well, good, Linda gets that book. Okay, now the number is, my researcher and I, Christine Locatus, we've spent 18 months on this topic, and our research shows that 90% of the green energy projects funded through the stimulus bill have connections to Obama, et cetera, high-ranking Democrats. Now, we believe probably the other 10% also have connections. We just haven't been able to find those connections yet. So when you look at... Well, they're going to benefit from them like Al Gore has invested in many of these projects that got stimulus funding. That's what I mean by connections. Or, for example, Abengoa Solar, who has the Solana power plant in Gary Pierce's district in Arizona. Bill Richardson is on their board. And so they had help with that. Excuse me, I need a sip of water here. So when you look at the green energy issue... You can see it's not really about the energy. Now, with that kind of record, would you think that maybe they would have stopped this green energy debacle? They would have realized, this is embarrassing. We should stop doing this. Wouldn't you think they might have done that? No. no. President Obama is determined to continue to push these green energy projects out the door. He's continuing to push those. On, Jan on July 3rd, you know, you realize, when they announce something the day before a big holiday, they really don't want anyone to know. They're not proud of this. <coughs> On July 3rd, the Department of Energy announced $4 billion in new green energy loan guarantees. As the Think Progress websites called it, these are for projects that will help fight global warming. You see, global warming is the foundation for all of this because the reason they say that we need these green energy projects, there's really two main reasons why they say we need them. One of them is because we have an energy shortage. Now, you know what? The American public knows better 
they know that America has a new energy abundance and that we don't have an energy shortage. The new oil and gas, you realize just last month it was announced that out of North Dakota, we are now pump pumping more than one million barrels of oil a day out of North Dakota. And there's only a few places on the entire planet that have that kind of production. But we have that in North Dakota. So we have an abundance of oil and natural gas in America due to the combined technologies of horizontal drilling and hydraulic fracturing. But that's on top of the coal, the natural gas, and the uranium, which fuels nuclear, that we already have in this country. America is rich in energy. So we don't need wind and solar to get us off of, to help our energy shortage. Another thing they often say is, oh, we need wind and solar, as I quote Charles Schumer in the letter that's in my column that I wrote there for you. They say, oh, we need wind and solar because it will help get us off of Middle Eastern oil. It will help make America more energy independent. Well, that is a total disconnect. As Cork pointed out for us in one of his charts, we in this country only get 1% of our electricity from oil. So when they say, oh, well, wind and solar, realize wind and solar produce electricity, okay? So only 1% of our electricity in this country, a number so small it's not even worth having in the conversation, comes from oil. So how are wind and solar going to help us get off of Middle Eastern oil? Okay, the last reason why they feel we need green energy is climate change. If they throw away climate change as their narrative, they have no reason for this. And they've got so much invested in this entire green energy ruse, they have to keep it going. So when you hear people talk about green energy, I hope that you will realize that right now in Congress, there is a push to reinstate the production tax credit that both my colleagues talked about, the PTC for wind energy. It expired at the end of December 2013. And right now, this week, there is a push in Congress to reinstate retroactively the production tax credit for wind energy. At the end of my column, I encourage each one of you to contact your congressional representatives, your congressperson and your senator, and tell them that you no longer want to fight, fund inefficient, ineffective, and uneconomical green energy. Ask them not to renew the production tax credit.